What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Guns, Nerds, and Steel. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to create the Vanguard base, the ideal version of the Vanguard base with all the lessons learned through the Vanguard series. So we're gonna be turning this base here into this base over here. This video may turn out to be just a little bit long, so I'll put timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the parts that you feel are important and you can kind of reference back if you need inspiration a little bit later on. I'm also going to upload the save file here so that if you'd like, you can just go ahead and download this world, put it into your save game folder, and then you can kind of come into the world yourself and see this firsthand. Alrighty, so... Just gonna be using dev mode, all the, uh, you know, just dev blocks, creative mode stuff. I'm not gonna do this by hand. And I'm not gonna do any modifications to this base. I'm gonna use this as a reference in case I wanna come back and check out what I did before. But for now, we're gonna go over to this neck of the woods over here and create a whole new base. All right, how about this spot right here? First things first, I gotta clear this area out. All right, so I have a little bit of a footprint dug out. I'm gonna have to clear this all out. I'm gonna dig out all the sand. My advice just to begin with is not to build on top of the sand, but instead dig down a foundation to the stone layer and then place your blocks on top of that. Actually not quite taking as long as I thought it would because I can just do this. Oh man, it looks like I'm building this on top of a resource deposit. Great. <coughs> All right, I got a nice little area dug out here. I'm not sure if this, it, it seems probably like it's gonna be too big, but I wanted to start big and then I'll just backfill it in whatever we don't use. Um, okay, what's next? We need to start laying uh, basically a foundation. So let's do that. So what I did in the Vanguard series is I made a trench all the way around the base. And if you want to do that, I'm gonna suggest right now that you do a span of five blocks for your trench so that uh, the end of both of the sides of the drawbridge will kind of touch and abut the walls. All right, so here we have the basic foundation here for the garage and the base portion. Now, I do want to note that my personal play style is to have my home base inside my horde base. I just, that's just how I like to play. It makes the most sense to me, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so um, I'm going to be building my garage, my base in this. This will be the foundation for that. And this will be the outer rim of the trench all around here. And I've marked sort of some center lines because I'm going to make this version of the Vanguard base completely symmetrical. So what I would have done here is I wouldn't have dug this out and I would have just left it as sand because it's, um, it's really not too too important at least the outer wall the the structural support line has to be uh, the strongest material you can make but this stuff in here can just be basically fluff you know you can see where that's all filled in and I'm just kind of gonna top this off here so this is basically one big solid block here all right so now that I have the basic foundation and the outline of the trench system done I'm going to go ahead and frame up the the main building and then we'll work on the fighting platform and the causeway and all that stuff. I'm also going to go ahead and put these drawbridges down because uh, a lot of the construction is going to be based off of this in terms of like wall height and stuff. Uh, one trick you can do to kind of get this done right that I've found is you gotta, the block that you aim at when you place it has to be the center block. So if you just kind of build out to the middle here and then then you put your cursor over that, then it allows you to kind of put it right where it's supposed to be. And just you can use wood frames to do that too. All right, one thing I am going to try doing on this version of the base is to flush up these drawbridge doors because when I built it the last time, I had created a bit of a lip all the way around the outside of the base, and zombies got ended up getting stuck on that and trying to beat their way in. And it, it led to eventually on the mother of all horde knights, zombies getting into the garage. So that's a bit of a base flaw. So we're going to eliminate that on this version. Uh -huh. So one thing I am noticing right now is that I am making this symmetrical with one block in the middle. Now, if I were to make this symmetrical with, say, this being the center, I would be able to make a fighting position that's two blocks wide like I did in the, the regular Vanguard base. And I do like that. You can make a fighting position that's on like a causeway, like a corridor that has a one block opening. But uh, for this base, what I want to do is make the same two block wide fighting position. So what I'm gonna have to do is do a little bit of remodeling here really quickly. 
All right, that's an easy modification for me to make in dev mode, but make sure you guys plan ahead because uh, remodeling this after you've laid like rebar and reinforced concrete would be a bitch. Okay, really, my best advice here would be what I did on this base before the series even started, I had drawn the whole base out on paper and then I basically just, you know, recreated it in game as we went along. And that seemed to work out pretty well for me, so I would advise doing the same thing for you. All right, get these drawbridges back down. There we go. All right, there we go. This is going to be basically the the floor of the main base right here. <laughs> We're pretty tall too. This has got to be taller than the regular base, I think. All right, so now we can basically plan out the the corridor, the fighting position, the resource room, the crafting room will be in the back over here, same as the other base, and we're going to be doing two wings going out from here, and then one going out from here, which will house all of the traps and switches and all that stuff, hopefully keeping them better protected than they were in the regular Vanguard base. Alright, so here what I've done is started to create the wings outside and you want them to be a fairly good distance away from where the causeway will be because if demos blow up at the causeway and you have a dart trap say right there the dart trap's going to get destroyed so you want to have them a fair distance back and what i found is that you need to put something on the other side of the bars to protect them such as the uh, arrow slit block or bars i used bars for quite a while seemed to work okay it's going to be something that the dart trap can shoot through, but that will protect it from a blast wave. So I'm just going to put a couple of dart traps down here, sort of as placeholders for now. That way we can kind of see what we're doing here. You could you could really just extend this so far down. It, it would just be an invincible. If you put like a row of 10 dart traps all the way down, stacked too high, you would be invincible. But you'd have to do a lot of mining because darts are expensive. I personally find just four to be more than enough, and in this case, we're going to go with eight. Alright, I was just kind of looking here at how we're going to do the causeway, and I deleted a couple of dart traps because I kind of want to bring them out just a little bit further, and I'll kind of show you why. I want to kind of protrude the fighting platform here a little bit so that we're not fighting right here, we're going to be kind of fighting out in this direction a little bit. It just allows you to make a sort of thicker side because one of the weak points on a fighting position like this is going to be the, the rim, the perimeter blocks like this. The second major weakness is going to be the causeway itself, because once the causeway is lost, zombie traffic will no longer come up to you and you have yourself a tower base. That's what I'm talking about right here. So now you can kind of thicken up the sides a little bit, and we'll kind of dress this up in a little bit. I'm not going to just use square blocks everywhere because it's kind of <laughs> hard on my eyes, but... All right, let's do the fighting position now. I'll show you guys how I make my fighting positions. All right, what I do is I use bars on the bottom like so. And then if you do advanced rotation, you can kind of uh, do this cross hatched bar trick. I kind of like this, not too bad. So yes, uh, there's a bar on this block and a bar on this block. So it's all bars on the bottom on top of the bars you're gonna put a plate and you're gonna put the plate on the front here. The idea being that dogs and spiders are going to crawl up in here and start hitting the bars. The bars are to protect against crawlers and dogs and you, whoops, you will be able to shoot right straight through to them. And you know, you can't really melee them well, but you can melee everyone else, which really pays off. On the top, you're going to put hatches. You just do the on-face rotation, make sure the hinges are pointed out, and you place them down like that. You know, regular iron hatches work really well, especially if you're doing repairing. These steel hatches are, like, OP. These will last a long time, even against rads and cops and everything like that. And what you can also do is put another layer right there, so that once these ones are broken, Zombies will be able to kind of jump up here, but they're still going to be stuck on this set of bars right, or this set of hatches right here. This is a super strong, viable fighting position tactic way, way into the late game. And you can do it one better here if you can make these steel for one. And the second thing you can do is put, uh, let's do advanced rotation here. You can put, I call this the bumper. You can put the bumper here on each side. And that just gives it even more strength when upgraded to steel. That bumper protects the plate. The plate then protects this bumper. It's really, really good here. 
<laughs> and what I found is you can toss grenades right onto this kind of like bowl here and uh, it blows zombies up right in the face. There's really good head damage. Alright, so that's the fighting position. We're going to have to replicate this a few times out on the fighting platform, which will be directly ahead of us. So for now, that is good. Let's get the fighting position platform set up. One of the good strengths of the Vanguard base is that there were multiple fighting positions and then shut them off and turn them on as needed so I could fall back to a safer position. All right, so I'm just gonna basically choose some arbitrary distance here and start setting up the platform. There we go. Now the causeway from this block to here will be 10 blocks. I think that's sufficient. It doesn't have to be, it could be four blocks really. It doesn't matter. All right, so this will be the core of the fighting platform right here. I would suggest upgrading this to steel just for added structural stability if zombies end up starting to uh, beat on that. All right, there it is. There's the core right there. And what you do here is you extend it out like this. Kind of gives you some more room to fight. And then in this direction, it'll be the main causeway back to the big base. All right, so what I did in the Vanguard base is that I put a pole block here. Now this is not connected to bedrock yet, but I will run this pole block all the way down. So this becomes a really good load bearing block. So I think I did this up like two or three. Let's just do three for now. Okay, good. And then I took, what, what is this block called anyway? The concrete wedge. It's, it's not really, yeah, it's not the ramp block, it's the wedge block. And you just got to get the correct orientation here. Let's try, uh, no, not on face. Let's do, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just aesthetics, the way that you rotate it. But let's try that right there. I think that looks good. And that right there. Nice. Then what you can do, I'm going to just do it right now for demonstration, is you do a door and you select um, on face rotation and then you do doors just like this and what I will eventually do here is put the Powered vault doors here so that I can control it with switches But for a long time in the Vanguard series I just had regular doors and because I had regular doors. I had to find a way to open them to redirect traffic when this position started to fail so when this one failed I would drop down I would open the doors, these ones would be open already, and then I would come over here and uh, close these doors to open up this lane and kind of redirect traffic like that. And the way that I found to do that, because when there's a whole mess of zombies right here, you can't just kind of aim and, and hit that and there's going to be like a fighting position here and it's a, a little bit narrow. But what I found I could do is I took center plates and I did on face rotation and I believe... Let's just test that right there. I believe this is what I did here. So I could drop down, crouch, and then open the door. So temporarily here, what I'll do is I'll set up the lip and I'll just demonstrate this. So when we finalize construction, I'll tear this out and we'll set up switches onto the powered vault doors. All right, so we've got the three basic corridors here. Let's make some fighting positions and get this kind of all set up the way we like it. There we go. I remember a plate like this so that the dogs and spiders are kind of sucked up in toward you while the rest of the zombies are kind of pushed back and the inner bumper here and the outer bumper like this all right now i put a little bit of a roof on here uh, we're gonna be knocking some of these blocks out i don't remember exactly how this went this is the basic idea though so from here we can just grab up our vault hatches and we can kind of set up the tops of the fighting positions so on face like that two sets of hatches basically just like that now I've set this up as a three-way corridor but really this corridor here you I didn't whoop oh, almost fell there I didn't quite want this to be a, a regular fighting position just because I kind of want the zombies, after I've exhausted these two positions here, I want them to come up here freely so that I can fight them at like the Alamo position back there. So, uh, you can do this initially, but eventually, once you get all the traps and stuff set up back there and you want to kind of have that as your final last stand, you're going to want to knock this stuff out here and create a sort of different type of system on this side. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now, and we'll decide what we want to do here a little bit later on. All right, so I'm, I'm starting to make the, the first ramp up to this fighting position here. 
using the same wedge block just because I think it looks kind of good just like that. And I brought this down in line with where the wall is going to be, but we need to kind of make a decision here on the, the final layout. All right, that's pretty symmetrical right there, but granted, we're gonna be putting a casing around the pillar here for the fighting position. So it's not going to exactly be uh, the way that it looks right now. So let's kind of frame out the trench and how that's gonna look. All right, so this is what I got so far. We've kind of narrowed the trench down a little bit. That would cut down on digging if I were to be like making this realistically while still having like enough of a span down here to put blade traps and traps and everything else. All right, and that's the last one. Now we can kind of uh, see how the trench is going to look here. So what we'll do is there will be two main ramps leading out of the trench, and I would prefer them to be about three wide so I can put blade traps kind of uh, symmetrically lining up with them. And so that's pretty much framed out how I would like to see the trench look. And this will be one ramp leading up out, and this will be another ramp leading up and out. The idea being that when zombies get up to this fighting position and crowd up and then fall down, they're gonna land here. We'll put some traps down here, and then they'll just have to kind of run their way up the ramp, circle back around, up and again, to the fighting position where they will probably then get killed or knocked down again. All right, so now that we've got the trench fully lined out, let's um, finish building the, the walls of the trench, and then I'm going to backfill all of this dead space in with dirt and stuff so that it just looks nicer. What I would suggest if you're just starting out is just, just frame it out, frame out the perimeter with some wood frames or something, then dig down once you've settled on a, a sort of configuration that you like. And if you're a parkour fan like me, you need to make this wall three blocks high so you can jump on top of it. And then you'll be able to put a ramp block here so that it will, you know, it'll flush up with a four block height, which is generally how deep sand or dirt is. And you'll still be able to jump up out of the trench and zombie, you know, it's just for, more for protection if you're down here working and zombies come in. You don't want it to be, it to be four blocks high because then you can get trapped. If you're not a parkour fan, you can put like one little ladder like that and then you'll just be able to kind of jump up here and crawl your way out. All right, the trench wall is done. Let's fill this place in. So one thing you can do is uh, in the game, you can make topsoil and topsoil is made out of clay. And if you just make some errors out here, or if you want to kind of flush up the ground, you just drop some topsoil down. It will match whatever biome you're in. And um, yeah, just a kind of fancy way of remodeling if you uh, want it to look nice. All right, so I think that'll just about do it. Everything's filled in and looks nice, nice and flush. Well, flush-ish. Yeah, we'll work on it later. So for now, what we need to probably do next is work on the ramps leading up to the fighting positions. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy here. You could use stairs, you could use... You could just use blocks and make them jump their way up, but I like to create a nice smooth causeway for them to run right up. Yeah, something just like that, and we'll recreate that on all three sides. All right, that will do right there. All right, let's make the main causeway to the base, and we'll connect these two together. What I'm looking for is this one right here than that one. So it kind of like narrows the closer you get to the fighting position. And then you want to take these half blocks here, advanced rotation on these, and you do this right here, all the way across. And you'll kind of replicate that on this side. This just basically gives you two blocks um, instead of one, because if it was just one block and a demo blows up and blows up that block, your causeway fails. This basically gives you just a little bit more security and it allows for um, just a more narrow path for zombies so they have a, a more difficult time stacking up here because that is going to be an issue. Zombies kind of crowding in this area here. And admittedly, this is a little bit experimental, but I'm going to try to make it two blocks thick. Um, in the vertical direction just for added support That way if the top layer gets blown off you still have another layer underneath it that they can kind of You know it wouldn't be pretty it wouldn't be clean, but they'd still be able to get to you Not entirely necessary, but when you're building your base It's always good to plan for the late game like what are you gonna do when demos start coming and blowing up? Because they inevitably will. I mean, you can make bases where you don't detonate demos, basically just using dart traps and other types of traps. But, you know, I I don't like to cheese it. I want to. I want the demos to come. I want them to blow up. I want my base to be able to sustain that. So you got to plan ahead for that. 
All right, let's lay the foundation. What I wanna do now is set up these ramps. All right, that's good for that part. Now we need to make a lip. The lip probably is best if you just do a ramp block. And like I was saying before, if you have parkour, you can just kinda leap your way out like that. Alrighty then. Well, disclaimer here, my mic cut out, so this is a voiceover here for the next couple of minutes. But here you can just see the lip that I put around the trench. There's plenty of blocks you can use to make uh, the angles kind of good for the eyes and make it aesthetically pleasing. And this, uh, like I was saying before, also lets you jump out. Okay, here we're going to be working on the pillar for the fighting platform. Now you can see it's four blocks going straight up. And I would advise making these core blocks steel. And then you can kind of put this casing like I'm doing right now on the outside, with, which is going to be uh, another eight blocks, basically, to guard the core. The outer blocks I left as reinforced concrete because they're going to be taking damage regularly and you don't want to be sinking a whole bunch of steel in. So I would advise making the outside reinforced concrete and then the core steel so that once they finally break through to the middle, uh, it just you know cuts down on the amount of steel that you need for repair work and the most critical blocks are the most upgraded blocks. <laughs> and right here, I'm realizing that I made the ramp four blocks wide. I wanted to make it three blocks wide, so we're going to just do some remodeling. The reason I want three blocks wide is because blade traps are three blocks wide, so it, it just makes it kind of line up better for the blade traps. Okay, just filling in the ramps here. I decided to fill them in because if you leave it open, zombies will tend to sometimes get stuck under here and start beating on stuff, so it's not required, but it does look nice and it has a slightly better function. All right, we're moving on to the interior now. We're gonna start with the crafting room because basically everything is built off of the crafting room. You wanna, well, I wanna have plenty of workstations for the late game, so I wanna make enough room so that I could have at least two, two to four of everything. And you'll see how I laid that out here. It took a little bit of playing around to figure out how I wanted to do this, but I don't know. This works for me. You can uh, experiment around and see what works for you. And now I'm just putting in some nice uh, like angled blocks here. Just easier on the eyes. Uh, breaks up some of the straight lines. Looks pretty nice. And then it will be half blocks for the ceiling. <laughs> All right, I was having some trouble here because it's, it's quite narrow, to be honest. I, I could have made this a little bit wider. But, um, so I, I got a little frustrated, I took a break, and I started working on the ceiling for just like the, the fighting area, I guess, or the control room, you could call it. And so we're just getting some of that set up here right now. Okay, there we go, nice smooth angles, and it looks like plenty of room to fight at. Okay, time to fill in the walls for the garage real quick. Okay, it's pretty tight quarters in these rooms, but if you plan it out right, you can fit everything you need in here. So I'm gonna be using half blocks on your right here to create the the, the, the edge wall, I guess. And then I'll be putting the trip wires right in here at ground level behind the dart traps. These are gonna control the dart traps. And then I will stick electric fence posts to the ceiling right above where the trip wire posts are. And um, that will, those electric fence posts will only be for tall zombies. It won't affect dogs or crawlers, but really it's plenty. And then it's arrow slits in the vertical configuration in front of all the dart traps. That way, it's a, it serves two purposes. One, the dart traps can shoot through them, and two, the dart traps then have a barrier protection on the outside so they don't get damaged. Okay, here's where the electric fence posts are gonna go. And here you can kind of see me struggling to get this all closed in nicely. There has to be enough room for you to maneuver around, but it also has to be, the, the walls have to be thick enough to provide some protection. If you use plates for the walls, I've found that that's not thick enough, that cop spit and, you know, anything with an AOE blast or area of effect, it just kind of goes right straight through. All right, so here you can see I finally sort of figured it all out, and this is not the final configuration, but this whole base is, is not built in a day, so this is probably how it would look for a period of time, and then as I collected more resources, I, I would expand it onto what we're gonna see later on in the video. And here is the finished product right here. All right, the microphone is back on, and I'm back talking to you live as we are building the Vanguard base here. Whoop. Okay, so hopefully I did a good job of describing how the interior was made here and how these protruding trap pods, or <laughs> whatever you want to call these, are made. Um, and uh, hopefully everything makes sense as far as the trench goes, but for now, we're going to get back to work here, building up the fighting platform. 
All right, I think to start with, we'll make the same good old fashioned hatch doorway right here. Very nice. And I believe there was a block sort of like this going across the top. Yep, that looks right to me. These parts extend down. This creates a bit of a shielding effect so that cops have a harder time seeing you and therefore spitting on you. Oh, making a quick trip back to see how things went here. Aha, I see, I see, yes. Okay, back to the real base. Looks like we had uh, this sort of thing going on here. I think what I'll do just for like the sake of symmetry is kind of the same thing on this side. Yeah, I think I like that. We'll put a little bit of like a sunroof here. So on the last base, we did this plate and bumper thing all the way across. We even had one here and I think that worked out pretty well. I mean, you're opening yourself up to a little bit of cop spit, but you're also opening yourself up, you know, your own visibility up, I should say. All right, I think that just about does it here for the fighting platform. Now we just get to dress it up a little bit. It's my favorite part. <laughs> I love this design. Looks pretty freaking cool. You can't deny it. <laughs> pretty cool. Reminds me of the, uh, what is it, the Night King from Game of Thrones, like how his... I guess it's not really his crown, but his head looked. It's all spiky. And I'll just put these on here too for added strength. Okay, another thing that we had going for us in the Vanguard base is that these were kind of closed in, just like that. That gives us kind of an avenue to throw stuff down there if we need to. All right, so here's a chance for me to demonstrate what you're supposed to do until you start using the powered vault doors. So you're fighting, you're fighting, things are getting messed up here. You wanna switch them over to a different side. What you do with the lip here is you can jump down, sneak or crouch, and you'll be able to look at the door just like that. Jump down, hit that. Jump down here, hit that. And you're good, you've turned it back into a tower base. And then you would just jump up here crouch and you can open these ones and then you're good to go on this side all right so now we have the question of how do we kind of wall this in because when you're going to be standing here cops and everything else from all directions like down there particularly are going to be spitting up at you so we need to have some protection up here so that that does not happen the easiest way i know how to do that is to basically extend a wall from here to here and seemingly the best way to go about that would be to knock this out here. Gonna do a little bit of remodeling. And how does it look if I just pull this wall straight across? Okay, that's how it's gonna look right there. Yeah, we'll fix it up. We'll make it look a little bit better than that, but that's the concept right there, just to keep this all nice and walled in. Plenty of room for zombies to fall off either side. Hmm, what do we do up here though? Let's try a couple different things out. Try this out first. Um, yeah, now this is all a little bit weird. Let's uh, remove those. And, uh, whoa, this is kind of weird here. Okay, that's not coming out the way that I liked it, but I think this is going to allow us to do things a little bit differently and it's gonna look real good all these out, replace them with just regular square blocks, come down here, and yep, we can do the same thing right here. Oh, that's gonna look sweet. Just about like that right there. Okay, doing uh, just about the same thing on all sides here. Okay, now we'll just duplicate the same thing over on this side. I don't recall that this particular block shape is available in rebar. You might need to make that out of wood and then upgrade it all the way up from there. All right, now for the set. All right, everything's nice and symmetrical now. Let's see, we need to now enclose this in. Number one, I don't want zombies stacking too high because look, they can stand on this and then another zombie can climb up their back and get up to this. So then you'd have zombies on the roof and that would be bad. So what we need to do is put some bars all the way across to there. Okay, this whole row right here it seems, could probably be ramp blocks. So I got this all sorted out. Uh, perhaps we should put a handrail here so I stop falling. Anyway, we've got a nice little staircase going up here. We'll put the garden right in here. All right, from here, we have a couple things to build. Uh, let's build the garden first. 
Okay, then I had a nice trellis going over, not a trellis, but like a, uh, I don't know what you call it, like rafters basically going over the top. Uh, let's get that built up. All right, so on the Vanguard base, I was using pole blocks to make the, uh, the canopy over the garden. Come on, give me the right shape here. There we go. Okay. Oh, a couple more. And I think uh, we'll have to test this out. I think corn is either three or four blocks tall. So if I can build this, maybe like this. So if I can build this over the corn, yeah, I can. So that should be good. Hmm, now that I'm looking at it, maybe I should uh, have some more sort of decorative uh, pillars. Maybe like there and there. Yeah. Okay, so that's actually spaced out perfectly. <laughs> so not exactly serving any sort of important purpose. In fact, I think it traps the birds inside the garden more often than outside, but I don't care. I think it looks just better than nothing, so we'll keep it there. All right, we'll close this in here as well while we're at it. Gives us a little bit of a, like a skylight to shoot up through if we need to. I'm not really happy how the rim looks around here. It doesn't fit with the theme everywhere else. So I'm gonna do some remodeling around here. All right, that's much better. Much more in keeping with the theme everywhere else. Very good. All right, the last big construction project to do is sort of the the late game helipad that I built. So that was on this t uh, part of the base out here. So we'll go ahead and uh, duplicate that here today. Okay, okay, interesting. So I'm just having a look through the shapes, and I know they're gonna change this in Alpha 20, but for now, the only way you can make this concrete half circle, or, you know, round, well, I don't know, whatever you call this thing, basically like a quarter circle, uh, is with the wet concrete block. And I do want to use two of these to make two pillars for uh, the corners of the helipad. In fact, I could probably get away with just doing one. Just having a look at things here. I think I'm gonna build the helipad out to have it at this level here. Okay, one in the middle, just like this. And one like support beam type of thing going all the way out. And that should give us a ton of extra structural stability to finish this off. And then bring it out a block further on each side to kind of make this look like uh, how I would expect a structural st support pillar beam type of thing to look, which is about like that. Now I want this to jut out a two, about two blocks, I think, will do. Let's see how that's looking so far. I think it's looking pretty good. I like it. <laughs> now we got a nice big fat helipad right here. So let's uh, duplicate the staircase on this side that we did on this side. I think that'll look nice. It sort of cuts into the helipad here a little bit. There we go. Much better. Yep, give me the wedge tips and we'll do that right there. Not too bad. Oh, even better. That's a good block right there. I like that. Better than it was before. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. That is pretty friggin' sharp in my opinion. And at this point, uh, the basic function of the base is basically completely done. So what we need to do now is uh, basically some final stuff. We'll put some windows in, we'll get uh, basically the whole thing outlined, and then we'll start decorating just a little bit. Okay, one thing I've been neglecting to do is figure out a way to get up here from inside the base. Now there's no room for a staircase, so I think we'll have to just poke a ladder up through and see how that goes. That's probably the staircase up under here. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, that's not half bad though. That could work. So we'll run a ladder right down to there. We don't want zombies going up after us, I don't think. Maybe you do, I don't know. And then top side, we can just put a hatch. How about like that? That ought to work. Yeah, so now you can just run right down in here and you're good. We also need a way to get down into the garage though. Looks like these two spots right here are pretty good. Not the best, but they will do. So put some hatches about like this. I don't feel as though that's gonna interfere with anything in terms of fighting. Same thing, just like that. And we can head right up and in, and we're here. I was just having a look at where I can put these storage boxes and I'm thinking... Can I take these out real quick? I'm thinking maybe this is probably the best way to go about it. Oh, that doesn't look great, does it? Um, yeah, put those back. 
No, wait. What if I put them like this? That doesn't seem too intrusive, so let's put these... Oh, uh, boy, what do we do now? So I'll just put some regular blocks up there to kind of plug in that hole. And kind of do this to make it look like they're up on a shelf. That's not too bad, I guess. Put a gun safe in that corner. Put like a wood table there. And... And a cooler. <laughs> I always put my candy in the cooler. I don't know why. Makes more sense to me. Alright, so it's pretty tight in here, but that's kind of, you know, it, you want a, a minimalist space. You don't want to be building expansive mansions that just take uh, weeks and weeks and weeks to build, even though this would certainly take you several weeks to build it. Alright, I would just really like to quickly kind of dress this up a little bit. I was kind of wondering if this would make it look just a little bit better, and I'm still undecided. Really just run these all the way down, too. Hmm. Alright. This could work. Yeah, we need to do this anyway because we need to build a canopy over these causeways here. All right, took a little bit of trial and error, but I figured this out, I think. So we bring this pole up here and then a pole going over. We'll knock this one out here. Yep, unfortunately that is not going to line up with the rest of them. That sucks, but that's how it has to be. Then we put one across like that. Perfect. All right, that's how it goes right there. It keeps zombies from kind of climbing up on top of you. All right, that's replicated on all sides. Oh, I love being able to jump on top from there. That's so sweet. That's the way I like it. It looks like it's connected now, and it looks like it's getting structural support from the main platform. And in fact, it is because we found out during the Mother of All Horde Nights that when the bottom pillar is knocked out, the platform can still stand. There we go. Much, 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 much better. There we go. I like that. That's good. Okay, we're done. Okay, we got the spikes back up. Everything's looking good. Yep, really liked this feature before. We're gonna bar up the windows. And what you're doing here is you're just putting bars on the outside, and then you're putting a pole block on top and bottom to create a little bit of a, a windowsill or a ledge. I think that looks pretty good, just like that. You certainly have to watch your step around here so you don't get impaled on one of these spikes. I'm gonna experiment with replacing this bottom piece with... Oh yeah, a wedge. I think that looks way better. Okay, very good. Put the little spiky things on the bottom. Ooh, yep, yep, like that. All right, we're looking real good here so far. The base is pretty much done. What I'm gonna do now is start hooking up the electrical and I'm gonna make some modifications that were just done for demonstration purposes initially, which is like having these doors here. These are going to be powered vault doors. I figure by the time you get a base this size, you should probably have access to powered vault doors and you'll want to switch these off of manual and on to switches. So I'm also gonna knock the lip off. This would no longer be necessary. Get these powered vault doors down again you got to do on face and you want to put them not like this because the zombies can actually stand on the rim of a vault door so and you can too so you want to look at where the hinges are now hinges are on the bottom so if the door opened it would be too low but if you do it like this the hinges are on the top the rim of the door is just on the side so you can whoop you can path on this, but the zombies won't. They Sometimes they get stuck on there, but for the most part, they don't think that they can path on there, so they won't really try to. And as you can just see briefly, when the door is open, this corridor will be open to traffic, basically. All right, again, just like that. And just pay attention where the door is when I put it down. It's up in the up position, so when you flip the switch and these are powered, they will... Um, allow zombies to, or you or anyone to kind of walk over to this position when they lose power say you run out of gas or the electrical gets knocked out the relay whatever um, then these will default to this position you know thereby rendering that position inaccessible again all right we're back to the uh, the electrical problem here so let's get a generator okay, the first thing I want to hook up is the doors so you'll recall one of the cool features in the Vanguard base is that we had motion sensors activating the doors. So we need to set that up here. Doesn't much matter where it goes, just has to be somewhere. So that's there. Motion sensor out here. One out here. 
So what you need is a switch. That switch will turn off the door system. Then you go generator bank to switch, switch to interior motion sensor, interior motion sensor to each of the exterior motion sensors, and then exterior motion sensor to the door. And in this case, I'm not a big fan of how that looks. So I'm going to put a couple of relays here. Let's disconnect that. We will do this to relay, relay to door. We'll do this motion sensor to relay, relay to door. We turn this on, we activate the switch. We need to now, um, come on, open that up, open that up bring this, point it down to the middle, so anytime it detects that you're in the garage, it opens the door for you, and then you need to go grab, whoop, oh, getting squished, ow, go grab these ones and you point them sort of down so that when you pull up, the door will open for you. All right, let's give it a quick test run here. There we go, and then we're in, and then we're out. Very good. So now you need to kind of play with, whoopsie, yeah, this is what happens when you don't play with the timers. So we'll do that real quick. Power duration, you want this to be like, I'd say about 10 seconds or so, so that when you pull up, you have plenty of time to get in. All right, so we got that all hooked up. Now we need to hook up the, the, the doors and all that crap out there. Now, here is where I might have messed up a little bit. I feel as though this is not going to be... Yeah, I can't reach over there far enough to hook this up to the relay. Maybe though, can I just connect one to the other? I could do that. I guess that works. The thing is, if this, this door closer to the base, if that breaks, then this one loses power. So I guess that kind of makes sense. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about just exposed wires coming out of your base. So then you just go switch to relay, switch to relay. Now we just need to get power up to the switches, just like that. And let's test it out. Of course, it's not going to work because the generator's not on. Yep, I heard him go. Let's check on it. Yep, they're on. Let's uh, speed our way out here and watch it happen. Yep, that's how it's supposed to work right there. So this is what it looks like with the wires on the rooftop. And I don't like it. So what I'm gonna do is just replace all these with manual doors. There we go, yep. It's okay to have it manual. I mean, we, we made it through the mother of all horde nights and things worked out just fine using this system here. So you definitely, you could have just relays and wires kind of running around everywhere. I would not suggest putting any relays on the bottom because cops are gonna be spitting up towards you. So anything on the bottom is completely exposed. Anything on the top is pretty safe. I never had any issues with relays or anything getting damaged up here, even by birds. As long as you have a turret up here to handle birds, I think you're fine. It's just more aesthetics for me. I don't want the wires kind of dangling through the base, but you know, you're free to do whatever you want. Oh yes, finally, we need, we need to uh, place those blocks there. And in order to do that, the doors need to be open. So let's just plop these in real quick. I don't know why this is a thing, but it's a thing. So I'm not gonna argue with it. I'm just gonna play by the rules. There we go. All better. I was thinking there just, there needs to be something here to kind of break it up around the door, which that, does look good it just looks a little kind of scrawny just having a look here at the the wet concrete blocks you get a bunch of different blocks here that you don't get with any of the other block types and what we'll do is we'll just kind of uh, rotate these like this to create this kind of beefy looking like door frame and then the top we gotta go right across like this unfortunately we, get, we gotta knock that motion sensor out to do this you just place the motion sensor a block higher, that's fine. Then you just take the eighth block and put it in this corner like this. Yep, serves no function whatsoever except <laughs> looking kind of sharp, I guess. All right, let's get some spotlights up here. Probably putting them down in here is the best option. 
Fortunately, zombies do like standing on top of them, but, you know, whatever. Not too big of a deal. So those will be the spotlights pointing up. Now we need uh, spotlights uh, up top side pointing down. I think for now, we'll just see how this looks here. Uh, they're, they're kind of blocked by some of the teeth and stuff, but <laughs> interestingly, the light kind of shines through blocks sometimes. So yeah, we'll see how that looks in just a minute. Okay, just need to get these wired up now. Okay, so I just ran the wire directly off the generator. Well, it's a generator to a relay, relay to this. I don't need it on a switch. I kind of like it on all the time. So we can't, we don't have enough cord to run it over that way. So what we can do is just kind of knock this out here. We'll put a relay down there on the ground. And I think we can probably do this. Yep, that'll work. And then we'll just run this all over on the same line. And we have to do the same thing over here as well. Okay, that's it for the bottom lights. We can close all these back up now. And we just gotta hook up the top side lights. Nice, okay, we're getting there. And then we'll hook this relay to this one over to here. And then we'll feed all of these ones off of this line. All right, we are illuminated. We'll uh, reorient them in just a minute. <laughs> if you remember from the Vanguard series, this part here gave me a lot of trouble. Let's see if I can figure it out now. Yeah, yeah, I got this. I spent enough time on it, I should get it. Jesus Christ. All right, there it is, little tiny platforms that you don't even need to put the lights on, but they look they look a little, they look better, at least than floating in midair, I guess. All right, last up is to create the SMG turrets. All right, so what I've done here on this side is just clear out some of the ground material. I might clear out even more, but I want to finish up the other side first. This is just creating a nice solid platform for us to put the uh, pillars that will house the uh, shotgun auto turrets here in a few minutes. All right, so that's it for the foundation out here. And before I forget, I'm going to put some like little wings onto this uh, on the ramps here because zombies do get stuck here and they kind of beat on the edges. So I want to try to prevent that a little bit. All right, now for the pillars. Yeah, there we go. That's the right proportions that I like. And then instead of having this as a single pillar, what we'll do is we'll do these gables and put them on face and put them on the exterior so that this is actually a stack of five blocks and not just one, but it has the appearance of just being one block. Very nice. Looking good. All right, let's set up some platforms for the SMG turrets and then we'll get everything wired up. So what I do here is I take these... Um, corner ramps and a corner full. We do a corner ramp, corner ramp, and then a corner full here. And then we'll put an SMG there and we'll repeat that on all sides of the base. So just like that there. Rotate it a little bit. That there and this one. Just like that. All right, there we go. We've got four around basically the main base. We don't really need any out here. We'll have the shotguns out here anyway, but we do need a couple on the rooftop. Let's actually get those SMG turrets ready. So shotguns go here, SMGs go here. Now we just gotta wire them up somehow. Oh right, we gotta do the um, SMGs up here just to protect us from the birds. One here and one there, I suppose. And I'm gonna go ahead and pack these relays like way down deep into the ground and we're gonna just seal them up. It's good we can barely see the wire this way. We'll just route all these together. And we just need to get them onto a switch and get them onto the power system. Okay, I've got some relays all the way down to here. And we just need to get from a generator to this one now. Okay, so I'm thinking we put a switch here and put a switch there. And uh, maybe the shotguns will be on this one. The SMGs will be on this one. All right, SMGs are hooked up. The question now is how to get the shotguns hooked up. We'll go here, to here, here, up, to this one, this one, over, to this one. And that should be hooked all up good now. Let's uh, test the switch here. Actually, the switches are not even hooked up to the generator now, so that's the next step. Let's turn everything on and just make sure everything's powered. Alright, doors are powered, turrets are powered, these doors are powered, everything looks good, these got power. These are good as well. We'll check the power consumption. Ooh, getting close to max on that one. 
And we're doing very good on this one. This has a whole bunch of extra power. All right, final touches. Okay, I'm going to extend this just a little bit further to accommodate the pillar that we put out here. And since the terrain is so uneven, we'll just put a little quick staircase on this side. Okay, last little trick we're gonna do is we're gonna take these fences and you can change the shape of them to this wood fence here and you can change the rotation so that they do this. This is just a good way to kind of uh, level things off so that there's no gap in between your regular blocks and the terrain. And the last tip here with the terrain stuff is that if you use wood frames on little areas like this that don't quite match up, you just put a frame down there and it kind of sucks the ground up a little bit. And it can push the terrain down a little bit as well, just so you get those nice, flush, level surfaces that you want. Alright, there it is, my friends. This is basically complete. All we need to do now is probably upgrade some stuff to steel, and I'll do that manually, and then paint job. I'm just seeing a spot that I missed here. I wanted to bring these poles all the way to the ground. Uh, whoops, not that one. Because if you bring them to ground, they then become structural integrity blocks that uh, are attached to bedrock. That's pretty much it. I mean, you're free to upgrade anything that you want to steal. I'm just upgrading the things that I think are the most important. <laughs> I've gone through about 2,500 steals so far, and we're not quite done yet. Just a couple more things in here. Okay, all the the doors are already upgraded. Those are powered vault doors, so you can't upgrade them any further. All the hatches are upgraded as far as they can be upgraded. Uh, let's go up here. Anything else to work on up here? Nope, nope, I don't think so. I think that we're good. Oh, look, <laughs> the corn grew. <laughs> That's how long I've been here. I've literally been here all day. This has been a long day of filming. Okay, what next? All right, uh, one of the last things to do here is to get these spotlights oriented. And as far as things go in here, I thought about putting some um, spotlights up here. You know what? I'm going to do that. i just put a couple extra spotlights in here to help illuminate the corridor here. That seems about right. Much brighter in here. Yeah, I like that. And in terms of in here, I just like kind of the soft light of a lantern in here. The I find the electric lights are just really bright, I guess is the only way to really put that. How about that? Whoop, there's a relay over here. What is this relay going to? Anything at all? Uh, doesn't seem like it. There we go. Oh, I never got these hooked up. We'll hook these up real quickly. Okay, so I got a switch here. We put the switch onto the trip wires. Trip wire to trip wire. Trip wires to dart traps on both sides. Good. And then we do switch also to electric fences and then fence to fence. Okay, so in case uh, you're not totally familiar with electricity, basically we have a generator giving power to the switch. The switch then can give power to the trip wires. The, the receiving trip wire then has to go to another trip wire, which will be the activating trip wire. So the activating trip wire is on this side. And this trip wire here needs to be plugged into all the dart traps. This will be telling the dart traps to shoot. Similarly, we have the switch connected to the electric fence, and then the fence runs to a receiving electric fence, and then it's just on thereafter. So if we test this out, we turn this on, the fences are yellow, and therefore they have power. The trip wires are yellow, and therefore they have power. Dart traps are not yellow because they are not getting power from the trip wire. When the trip wire is activated, though, they will. And to test that out, you just stand in front of it. Whoa! Well, yeah, there we go. I can duck under this one. You can hear that kind of like that rattling or whatever. That's the dart trap. So let's just turn this on real quick. And we have four dart traps here, and four on the other side, that's 80 watts. We'll check the wattage here. Yes, we have plenty of power left. 80 watts would put us at still less than 200, so we're only about two-third capacity on that generator. This one, however, is almost maxed out. So that's something you'd have to watch out for, is overloading the generators. All right, and with that, I think I've upgraded everything to steel. 
we might actually be done. It's uh, not completely done though. We have the long and arduous process of painting this place. You guys basically have the luxury of this. <laughs> Just like that, all painted up. What do you guys think? Let me get on the ground here and we'll do a walkthrough. I did make a few modifications uh, here and there. Nothing really substantial and nothing that I, I really felt like recording at the time. I wanted this to be a big reveal, but I did put some traps down here. Those are wired directly into some switches that are in like the, uh, the Alamo room there. Uh, so the idea being that they'll fall off the causeway, landing into this mess of traps, and as they work their way out, come back soon, hopefully, they'll, uh, they'll head their way back up one of these ramps, whichever one is open at the time. So let's walk up here, and this up. Ooh, missed a couple spots with the paint there. Can't have that. All right, anyways, we've got the, uh, the Vanguard, like, signs here, I guess, to kind of name the base, the Vanguard base. All right, so this would be like the main control room and like the foyer, I guess you could call it. Uh, this goes to the blade traps on the left, I believe. Yep. And this would be blade traps on the right. And this would be the doors on the right. And we can't see it from here. I'll have to kind of port through. Yep, that goes to these doors here. So when you want to shut that side down, you just run over here, hit that. Run over here, hit that. This one will go to the, I think the SMG turrets, and this one over here goes to the shotgun turrets. And there's a switch in here which will turn on the electric fences and the dart traps, or at least the trip wires that will then activate the dart traps. Not much going on in here, this is just the, uh, you know, the room where you would access the dart traps to reload darts and such. Into the main crafting room now, we've got it all well decorated. I put some uh, paint on these pipes, and the pipes kind of exhaust out through the back, which I think looks pretty cool. Get back! <laughs> anyway. All right, all the fires are rolling. It's actually kind of loud in here, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. I've got everything labeled the way I would normally have it done in a survival world, and um, pretty, pretty snazzy looking. I like it. So heading up to the rooftop now. I set up lots of lighting here, just on the corners, just to throw some light down on the ground, and we'll have a look in a few minutes at what it looks like at night. The garden is ready. I brought over all the vehicles, so, um, you know, the, the poor old Vanguard base is abandoned, basically. <laughs> all the generators are empty, and I brought all the vehicles over here. So we're ditching that place. All right, I put these up on a little bit of a pedestal because um, it, they can kind of then cast light over the spikes, and it just looks a little bit better. All right, let's head down into the garage and see what that looks like. All right. Here it is. Pretty basic, just all the generators down here. So you need to definitely come down here periodically, top off the fuel. Now in the Vanguard base, I did put a mine in with a hatch down here, and you can do the same thing and just kind of work your way down here and see if you can find anything to mine. I know there is definitely stuff to mine. You just have to be careful not to mine underneath support structures because if you mine underneath a support structure that is, you know, needs to be connected to bedrock, you'll you'll kind of mess that up so don't do that all right just having a look real quick at what it looks like at night let's fly around and see it's pretty cool man pretty well illuminated anyway i'll do some cool 360 shots at the end make it a little bit cinematic uh I, the the intent i have right now is to put this on the workshop so i'll probably have a link below to for you to go ahead and download this world file and uh, then you can just come into this world and see for yourself and play with the base and you know you can even run a horde here and do whatever you want. If you do end up coming into this world I'll just let you know right now that the the regular vanguard base is let's see to the north of where we are right now so if you wanted to check this base out too it's right here oh and for some reason, the gyrocopter and all the vehicles are still here. That's kind of strange, because I definitely brought them over there. <laughs> it's that weird, like, duplication bug. So yeah, you could, uh, you know, explore this base, and you could explore the, the new base over here. Alright, we definitely will be fighting one gigantic monster horde here, but we don't have enough time for that today, so you'll have to subscribe so you can be notified of when that video releases. It will be in the next week or two. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna have to do it for me for today. I hope this video was helpful. Consider leaving it a like and subscribing for future content. I'll be back again soon for the massive horde fight at the Vanguard Base 2.0, and I hope that you'll join me again. But until then, I wish you all the very best. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.